जय श्री माता जी परम पूजनीय श्री माता जी की कृपा से आज हम आज का ध्यान प्रारंभ करने जा रहे हैं बहुत ही विनम्रता से श्री माता जी के चरणों पर प्रणाम करके हम सभी बंधन लेंगे विथ श्री माता जी इज ब्लेसिंग्स लेट एस बो डाउन एट हर लोटस फीट एंड टेक बंधन श्री महामंत्र एंड श्री गणेश मंत्र
अपने दाहिने हाथ को हम हृदय पर रखेंगे फिर कीपर राइट हैंड ऑन द हार्ट इन फुल डिवोशन लेट एस प्रेट श्री माता जी प्लीज गिव अस लव एंड कंपैशन श्री माता जी कृपा करके हमारे हृदय में प्रेम और करुणा भर दीजिए श्री माता जी मैं एक शुद्ध आत्मा हूं श्री माता जी आई एम अ प्योर स्पिरिट लेट्स कीप द राइट हैंड ऑन द फोर हेड इसी दाहिने हाथ को हम माथे पर रखेंगे आज्ञा चक्र पर प्रार्थना करेंगे श्री माता जी कृपा कर हमें क्षमाशील बना दीजिए श्री माता जी प्लीज मेक अस फॉर गिविंग श्री माता जी कृपा करके श्री जीसस मैरी के सभी गुण हमारे अंदर स्थापित कीजिए श्री माता जी प्लीज अवेकन ऑल द क्वालिटीज ऑफ श्री जीसस एंड श्री मैरी विद इन एस दायना हाथ श्री माता जी की ओर दोनों हाथ श्री माता जी की ओर श्री माता जी कृपा करके हमें संतुलन प्रदान कीजिए हमें ध्यान की स्थिति प्रदान कीजिए श्री माता जी प्लीज अवेकन thoughtless awareness and balance within us
दिस स्टेट ऑफ मेडिटेशन लेट अस लिसन टू श्री माता जी स्पीच इसी ध्यान की अवस्था में श्री माता जी की अमृतवाणी ग्रहण करें I am very happy to see all of you here, and that now we have so many surgeons in Australia. I think Australia has got the second position in surgery. Of course, the first position, if you exclude. Thank you. It's better now. It's too much. I think. In the sense that, if you exclude Russia and the Eastern Bloc, then I would say maximum number of surgeons we have now in Austria, and the second is in Australia. The I was late because a phone had phone call had come from Austria, and they were trying to. Talk to me. I was just wondering how it's such a coincidence. <clears throat> Now, we have started in a very bumpy way, I should say, to begin with. Australian Sajoga. We had funny leaders and lots of problems were there. But somehow or other, now we are settling down, and we have a very nice group here, and that people understand the value of Sajoga. One thing about Australia is that it's a very far-off place, a very exclusive place, and uh, it was surprising to me that uh, how Sajoga prospered here so fast and so easily. Perhaps, maybe one of the reasons that you are a little far away. Sometimes, I don't know. Something that I should know, and I know something I did not know. So the Australians always write very, very long letters, <laughs> so long that I cannot really read the whole of it. As you know, your mother has is very, very busy, so called. And since morning I start reading; it doesn't finish till the lunch time. So one thing I have to tell you that whatever you have to say, you should say in short. <laughs> Either you make it long or short, I can understand it. What's the problem is even with vibrations, I can. Moreover, most of them are concerning themselves all the time, concerning themselves like I'm sick, my daughter is like this, my father is like this, brother is like this, all regarding themselves. Very exclusive again. Now I would like to know more about what you think of doing Sahaj Yoga. How you would like to go? How would like to proceed? What is the best way of doing it? In that case, also sometimes I find people mostly write about what schemes they are have to make money. How they want to involve Sahaj Yogi into that money making propositions, this that. So. Very different thing, and one has to realize that uh, we don't have to make money out of sajogis or their collectivity or anything. Of course, you need money very well, but it should be done on a collective basis and not on an individual basis. So we are trying to plan out something for you. Maybe work, may work out later on that you might be able to sell some things here and make some money, or if you need some. But actually, in Sajog, I found we don't need much money. If all of you who are so many, they said there are thousand Sajogis uh, in Australia. Thousand is a very big number. With the thousand Sajogis, I was discussing that why do you have problem of money? You should not have any problem of money. So maximum, how much do you spend? 
They said maximum we spent twenty-five thousand for the tour and all organizing, and altogether they said we spend about sixty thousand. <coughs> it's very simple. I said everybody, if they pay six dollars per year, they can work it out. Sixty dollars, I'm sorry, per year. It's not much. It's about five dollars per month. And I said, is is it too much? Five dollars. I mean, I've seen the here the flowers it costs you so. Much. So on this point, they said some are very generous, but some do not pay a single pie. This is going too far. You see, also it's a Lakshmi principle. Must understand. If you try to save, save such a little amount as that, how can you expect Lakshmi principle to work out in you? You see, you must know what a unique thing is surgery. How it has redeemed you, how you have transformed you, and you have landed into such a beautiful area of God's kingdom. Now, this money is not for something uh, that we use, uh, say, for absurd things, but is for propagation. I come here nowadays. Now I have decided to come every second year. So even. This is it's too much for you to arrange my tour. Then I will give up. If you think it is too much, some of the people are like that, very miserly. And is a reputation. I don't know why is about Australians. They are very miserly people. They are not. On the whole, they are not. On the whole, some of them are extremely generous, and some of them are very miserly. Who some or other confront other people? And a very bad reputation is established. So all of you have to be little generous. Otherwise, you others who are generous suffer the consequence. As a mother, I have to tell you that you have to be generous. You know, in the beginning, I was paying all the money for everything because my husband also realized that he should really contribute to this noble work so that he is blessed. And this is where I think Australians are failing compared to all others, though they are very many in number. Now count your blessings. First, count your blessings, and try to understand that what you are doing is no good for Sir Yoga in Australia. Those who don't pay at all are really people who have not understood Sir Yoga. In Sir Yoga, of course, I don't need any money. I don't want any money. And also, somebody told me that uh, the money was misplaced in Australia before. That's why people are afraid. That's no reason. You know that now we are handling the money ourselves. There's nothing like that, and we've done a lot of work since I have taken over. So one has to understand that this is a very low-level behavior towards Sir Yoga, because Sir Yoga has given you so much. So much, and you just count what Sahaja Yoga has given you, then it looks very low level that you can't even contribute six pounds or five pounds or five dollars. I'm sorry, five dollars that to Australia for your decision. Who is responsible? How will you progress? This is is a very delicate subject. I didn't want to talk about it, but if Australians are known to be like that, I think it's better to have a proper image. Actually, the main heavy things that are paid, like building ashrams, building schools, and all that, do not come from your money at all. Not a single pie from your money. Nothing comes out. It comes out of international funds. Out of people who are extremely generous, and also partly from me, and if some money is left over with the tour. So this one, I had to talk to you today. Saturday is all right, not on Easter day. I won't talk all these things, but today is the day when you should know that Christ was suffering. 
and this is the time we have to understand that you are not in the suffering anymore, you have come out. But the way you treat Sahaja Yoga is just a, a side issue like buying a magazine sort of a thing. It's not good. You are not paying due respect to Sahaja It's of course, your dedication is important, meditation is much more important, but little money you must keep for Sahaja Yoga. There is no need for you to uh, pay like the way you pay for these gurus and all that, nothing of the kind. But a little money you should learn to take it out with respect, with dedication, because after all we have to pay it in some places. I should not talk about these things and I have told Stephen to circulate a letter of requesting them, telling them what the problem is. It is a... I mean in India they are anxious to pay for such and in every country I've seen they are anxious to pay. So this kind of a at atmosphere and this kind of a beautiful gathering that we have, we should also think what we can do for such The second thing you have to do that as you have got your realization, others also should get it. So you have to form groups go round the cities, go round to the smaller places and try to spread it. Some people do it, definitely, some people do it. But there are thousands of yogis. If they do it every year, they can increase, in, multiply like anything. If you can really always think that we have to do something for Sahaja Yoga, you can go out on Saturdays, Sundays, uh, form your music groups or anything and try to establish Sahaja Yoga outside. We are duty-bound to do it. Like when this light was not there, it was all right. But when it has got the light, it has to give the light. That is the duty of the light, it's the nature of the light. And that's what you have to do, is to spread Sahaja Yoga as much as possible. The third thing I feel uh, that I should point it out that when it came to going to America, nobody wrote to me, nobody told me that people are going to America. It's very wrong because in America, Sahaja Yoga is not at all established, a very few Sahaja Yoga. Secondly, you just went there for a holiday or some sort of a thing, I don't know what I have already told you, that America is hell. Why do you want to go to America? There are other places you could have gone, you could have worked there, but you put pressure on those people who were there. Not only that, but you got all kinds of funny things from that horrible land of America. Americans, as you know, are very, very mm, immature. They don't understand Sadhu. All kinds of gurus are there, there are witchcraft, legally accepted things like that. Of all the places, why should you go to America, I can't understand. And people just went there to America, it was a very wrong thing to do, without even telling me, without in, even informing me, uh, they went there, otherwise I would have stopped it. Another difficulty came up for me very much, that because you had not decided to go for an India tour, this is the last time we'll have such a tour which is, was so expensive. But it was all thought that all Sahaja Yogis will enjoy in the same amount that you have been paying. We started this idea, everybody knew about it, but at the last moment when I went to England to find out, there was no money at all. So I had to borrow money and do the business. This is very, very troublesome and you don't want your mother to be troubled for nothing at all. And then suddenly so many came. You see, you understand that, supposing you have to take this place, you cannot just last moment come and say, oh no, we want to take this place. You have to organize all your travel by train, by uh, buses, by this, by that. How much Indians work? They organize everything throughout. This time they really got absolutely upset because some people just came to Delhi, 
Some people came through the Haryana too, some went to another part, but the worst is some of them just came up to Pune. They say, we'll do half, you better not go. If you have no money, you need not go. Mother give us half, then one-fourth, then one-fifth. I mean, there's no bargain about it. The money that you give is for the full tour because we have to organize it on that premises. For example, you go anywhere now. There's a, they'll say now, there is a train available if you have five hundred passengers. So we take the whole train, all right? Now you only say three hundred people pay, then all the two hundred who is going to pay? It is something you are away from the rest of the world, sitting down here, enjoying Sahaja Yoga, you don't understand that all these things have caused a lot of problems and a deficit. Big deficit, I don't know what has happened. I'm now going back to Kabehila to sit down and find out about the accounts, which I am very bad at. And the more you will care for such things, the worse it will be. I have to tell you that it's a, there's no planning needed as such, but anywhere in modern times, if you have to go, you have to do it beforehand. It's not just you reach there and say, all right, Mother, we are here now, do what you like. All these things have really upset the Sahaja Yogis in New Delhi and in Bombay. And they have sent me word that, Mother, please tell all the Sahaja Yogis all over the world, especially, especially Australians, that they should take a decision before at least a month. So if you could decide in October, it would be better. And send over the money, because if you borrow the money from the bank, you know you have to pay interest also. So I know children sometimes don't behave properly, but you don't want me to have trouble of this kind. And a mother has to tell the children what are her problems are. On the whole, there are some Sahaja Yogis in Australia who are tremendous. They are doing so well, they send such beautiful cards to me, they write such beautiful poems that really I don't know how to thank them. But first of all, you have a duty to spread such. Secondly, it is for you to enjoy Sahaja Yoga, but also to see that by your behavior you don't trouble other Sahaja Yogis all over the world. Sahaja Yoga has so much progressed here, it's very, very surprising thing. We had a very bumpy start, I told you. I used to think that Sahaja Yoga in Australia will be disappearing into Indian Sea or something. But we have now people who understand what is Sahaja Yoga. And also you have very, very good leaders practically everywhere. Also they understand uh, Sahaja Yoga very well and they think it's a very important thing and try to think how important is Sahaja Yoga. With all those things, you see, a very, very simple understanding should be there that we belong to one family. When I come here, I feel a joy of a mother who has come to meet all her children, her family. And if we are in a family, we bear a responsibility. I don't want to put any pressure on you on money which is not reasonable, but you should be also reasonable about it and try to think in a serious manner that whatever mother is doing, whatever she is trying, we should not put a burden on her. So for one thing I must congratulate you that all the collectivity has come back to normal. Even in Melbourne I was surprised how the collectivity has come back and is helping everyone. Leaders all of Australia 
I talk to them one by one, and they only say that they are all right. For pujas, they are very good, they are good for other collective uh, things we do. But as far as working for Sahaja Yoga, you will get a handful of people. When it comes to working for Sahaja Yoga, uh, very few will be available. All the way on the road, they had built about twenty-five to thirty big gates on the way. And also I had advertised all over, all over Pune. And I was amazed we had uh, hundred thousand people for the program. Can you believe it? And then second time, when I went to Bombay, I was surprised really. We have a park called Shivaji Park, and there always had been big meetings of Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, this, that. And I was amazed that they all said there has been never such a big number of at least 125,000 people, all done by the people. Everybody working out, anybody who knew this one, he brought this, he brought that. And by doing that, you see, the expenses were much less. And they never put a pressure on me for money, never. I've never seen these people. They are not so rich as you are, you are very rich people. But they have never put any pressure on me. To them, Sahaja Yoga is their life, Sahaja Yoga is their aim, and Sahaja Yoga is totality. So with all this, I have to tell you that your... I've told the leaders to make a list of people who do not pay money, also to make a list of people who do not help in the work. Not the ones who help, but those who do not help. So I'll put a bandhan on them and let them feel that it is important what we have to do. Last but not the least, the problem of certain marriages which crop up uh, very much here, I'm surprised. When you are to be married, you are given full chance to decide whom do you want to marry. And after marriage, it goes off. Mostly it is the mistake of the women here, I'm very surprised, because always it's the woman who dominates, she wants this, she wants that, like that. Now, you have to know that women are very important for society. Your problem is not so much of political problems or economic problems as it is always common like that in every Western country. But the main problem you are facing is your society. You know what's happening in your society, what a terrible society it is, how the children are harmed, how, how the women are tortured, how so many things are happening in our society. And all kinds of filthy things are happening which cannot be called as anywhere near advancement. All these things we see around us and we see our children suffer with that. So what, who is responsible for the society? Women. Women are responsible for the society. They have to do it. I am also a woman and I understand that to me society is so important. I should not myself do something that is wrong. I should not allow my children to do something wrong. Now, if children are not meditating, they are not food soaking. I was told that nobody can correct it, anybody else's child. If somebody says something to somebody's child, they will be angry. Even Indian ladies, I was surprised, don't like anybody correcting their child. It's not in India, never. If one woman does that, she'll be discarded from the society. Anybody can correct. And pe parents thank that person. Say, when we were young, supposing on the road we are laughing, so there could be a joke, we are walking, and somebody informed my mother, she would shout at us. What business you had to make jokes on the street and laugh like that? It's very cheapish. But she would never shout at the person who reported. That was not done. 
So this is another thing I want to tell you very frankly, that no parent should feel bad if somebody corrects the child, should thank that person, because your children need too much of correction, you have no idea. When we started the school, just after two months they gave up, said, these are not children, these are coming from some jungles and they bite us and they hit us and <laughs> they take out all our belongings and throw them. They were so horrible hooligans. For two months they tried and they gave up. They said, close the school, we can't have, we'll have Indian children. I told them, I gave them one ebony rod, so big as that, black. I said, you show them, they say that this mother has given, anybody who tries to misbehave will touch that person with this. And they were all right. <laughs> they started behaving all right. Otherwise this school would not have been there, you don't know how terrible they were. They, were used, they used to threaten that we'll jump down the cliff or they used to climb over the uh, trees or on top of the roof also, like monkeys, just like monkeys, without any discipline, without it. So your children need much more correction than anybody else, not only Australia, I mean any one of the foreigners, they need. So it's better that you allow others to correct your children. And I'm surprised that Indian lady is objecting to it. They are also learning bad things from here, I think. This is never in India. Nobody does that. And that's why Indian children are much better. You will not, you have, you, you must have noticed your Indian children in a group there, how they behave, how quiet they are, how, uh, how sweetly they are listening to everything. Very nice. The reason is they are disciplined not only by parents, but by the whole society. And the idea is that everybody loves your children. They are the children of the whole society. We live collectively, we are not individualistic. And if they find anything wrong with the child, they should carry. Of course, if you find somebody who is doing it just to uh, show their anger or temper, then you can report to the leader. But normally it should be treated, after all, you are all parents and you know what is good for children. I was amazed that uh, children are not allowed at all to be corrected by anybody else. Because, you see, a child, uh, you must know, is a big responsibility. And only the mother cannot control, only the father cannot control. The whole society has to control and discipline the child. So the idea of good mannerism, this is not good manners. These are not good manners. See, we should know, this is not good manners. One should feel very shy about it. I remember once my granddaughter, we had taken her to Brighton, and she wanted to go on a... Right, uh, they have um, what small, small trains. So they went round and came back. Still she wanted to do it again. And uh, I said, no, no, you can't do it, we have to go now. Then she looked at her mother and started crying. Mother said, whether you cry or anything, you are not to go again, that's what it is. She must have cried for about, say, five minutes and then she felt so ashamed, she put both the hands on her face. So she was very young, so it must be about four years. I said, why are you hiding your face? Because I misbehaved. These are not good manners from very childhood. You must tell your children what are bad manners and what is their uh, position, their sajogis. Put them up, tell them what is uh, their dignity, how they are, they, how special they are how much God's work they are going to do, they are in the kingdom of God, they can't behave like this. Anybody who tells you should not mind, because it's all for their good. It doesn't in no way harm your child. But this shows your, what you call mamatva, as we say that you are attached, it's my child, that's his child, that's his child, nothing like that. In Sahaja Yoga, every child belongs to everyone. And that is what we have to show in our life. Even our things in the West, I've seen people, if they, a thing belongs to somebody else, they'll just spoil it. If it is theirs, then they'll keep it very carefully not to be touched. That's not search culture. Search culture, I'll tell you what, like, 
Supposing if there's a spoon from somebody's family has come in the house, everybody will tell her, is it there or not? Have you returned it or not? Even a spoon, they'll eat us off. I tell you this not only with me but any <laughs> Indian family. Not that all Indian culture is all right, but quite a lot is needed to compensate for this kind of a culture where everybody is free, do what you like, uh, live as you like. So also you have to train them up how they should live, how they should keep their things. For example, in Kabela we had children and we had parents and they were putting them in their own rooms. I said, no, there's not, no need, you to, there's so many rooms, we make one room for the children. I let them feel that this is their room, they have to look out. I was so surprised, the same children who were spoiling their parents' rooms all the time started with their little, little hands carrying their blankets, little blankets and everything and putting it up nicely, keeping it clean. A mother is going to come, so they put some flowers and said, so sweet. I said, the same children about whom parents were saying, mother, they are hopeless. Every day we have to spend so much time on their thing, they put this thing here and put there. So to make them responsible. And it was so sweetly they did it. They are all uh, below five years, from two years to five years, imagine. So <laughs> sweetly they did it. And for me also they made a seat and wouldn't allow the adults to do anything. So I was surprised the same children how they have changed only by getting a dignified place for themselves and a, an understanding that they have to do something. So too much of protectiveness is not needed and abandonment is also not. You have to be in the center, tell your children how to behave and what is the good manners are. They should know these are bad manners, we just can't do it. We just can't do it, bad manners. And this if you tell, they will understand because we must face our children. We have to tell them what is what is wrong, we have to tell. I'm sorry today I took too much time and I hope your leader will forgive me for this. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> uh, I'm just uh, trying to use this time for something really very much needed. I never get a chance to talk to Sahaja Yogis in this way. When it's a puja time, it's so auspicious that uh, you don't want to say anything that will make people a little uh, unhappy. So I have a feeling of a mother who loves her children very much and who wants her children to enjoy life fully in the kingdom of God. So I hope you don't mind whatever I've said and whatever I've done is all for our good. May God bless you.
जय श्री माता जी परम पूजनीय श्री माता जी कृपा करके अब सभी सहयोगियों को आध्यात्मिक उत्थान प्रदान कीजिए श्री जीसस के सभी गुण सबके अंदर प्रस्थापित कीजिए श्री माता जी प्लीज ब्लेस ऑल सहयोगी विथ डीपर स्पिरिचुअल ग्रोथ and all qualities of shri jesus let us humbly bow down at shri mata ji's lotus feet and take bandhan shri mata ji ke charno par pranam karke bandhan lenge 